Hey y'all, this is Dr. Carmen Corder with thedrnurse.com and in this video I want to start a discussion about hemodynamics. Now hemodynamics I know can be very um, intimidating. It can be a lot to learn, a lot of numbers that sound foreign and you're like I don't know what that is, what's the difference between wedge pressure and central venous pressure. Well today in this video I want to discuss some of the foundational basics that you must understand before you move on and you're able to really grasp some of those more in-depth difficult concepts such as wedge pressures and CVPs and pulmonary artery pressures. So today we're going to talk about just basic blood flow through the heart including all the valves because you've got to understand the valves, you've got to know where the valves are because you're going to run into questions like, well, what could be the underlying cause of an elevated wedge pressure? And if you don't know uh, which valve is where, then you're going to miss questions like that. All right. So we're going to just start off with the blood flow through the heart. Now I have a basic drawing here. I very literally have drawn a heart. So what I have over here is I have the deoxygenated blood on the right side of the heart and then the oxygenated blood on the left side represented by the red. So just starting with the right side of the heart, we know that the deoxygenated blood comes back from the body. It comes back from the top of the body and from the bottom of the body from the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava, all right? And that deoxygenated blood from the superior and inferior vena cava empty into the right atrium, all right? Then from the right atrium, we go through the tricuspid valve, all right? So you've got to remember that the right atrium has the tricuspid valve, so blood flows Deoxygenated blood flows from the right atrium through the tricuspid valve down to the right ventricle. All right, now from the right ventricle, our blood is still deoxygenated, so it's got to get to the lungs. So from the right ventricle, we go up through the pulmonic valve through the pulmonary artery. And this is important to remember because the pulmonary artery is one of the only arteries in the entire body that carries deoxygenated blood, right? Our arteries carry oxygenated blood to our tissues and our organs, but not the pulmonary artery. So our blood then travels through the pulmonic valve, up through the pulmonary artery, and off to the lungs. So it goes to the lungs, circulates through the lungs, and gets oxygenated. Then the blood returns through the pulmonary veins, and that's something else that's weird about the heart. Usually veins carry deoxygenated blood, but it's exactly opposite with the heart. So the pulmonary veins bring oxygenated blood back to the left atrium. All right, and then our oxygenated blood then travels down through the mitral valve down to the left ventricle. All right, and it's very, very important to remember that the mitral valve is on the left side of the heart. Okay, then from the left ventricle, the blood enters the aortic valve, up through the aorta, and then out to the body. So the oxygenated blood leaves the, a the aorta and it goes out to the body to perfuse our organs, our tissues, including the heart itself. So the aorta branches into the coronary arteries and perfuses the heart also with oxygenated blood. All right, so that's just a real simple run through of the blood flow through the heart, but it's something that you have got to understand and you've got to remember before moving on to more advanced hemodynamics. All right, one way to remember the valves, the order of the valves in which the blood flows, so it goes through the tricuspid, the pulmonic, then the mitral, then the aortic, is try pulling my aorta. So T P M A, all right? Tricuspid, pulmonic, mitral, aortic. So that's the order of the valves, all right? And always remember that your 
deoxygenated blood is over there on the right side. The oxygenated blood is on the left side. The left side is the big powerhouse of the heart. It's the one that's got to pump blood all throughout the body. So that makes the mitral valve and the aortic valve, they've got to be big and strong too to keep up with those high pressures of that high pressure, high power left ventricle. So they're also the valves that we're going to see um, the most problems with, you know, mitral stenosis, aortic stenosis, and things like that. So in the next video, we'll start talking about some of the measurements that you're going to be looking at, what do they mean, how to interpret those. But I want to thank you so much for watching my video of the blood flow through the heart. I hope you have found it helpful. If you're watching this from YouTube, be sure to head over to thedoctornurse.com and check out all the awesome resources that are on the website. Subscribe to our mailing list. I'm sending out um, free stuff every Friday now. This last Friday, I sent out a really cool hemodynamic measurement reference guide with like all of the measurements for the, the hemodynamic measurements that you're going to need to know for nursing school. So be sure to sign up for our, our mailing list. Um, hit that subscribe button on the YouTube channel. And again, I want to thank you so, so much for watching. And I hope to hear from you guys and see you guys really, really soon.